Scenes from last week's installation All Services Army Birthday Commemoration Run. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. More on the Army Birthday in just a moment. Also this week we go inside the DOD Cyber Crime Center. June is LGBT Pride Month and we bring back the Fort Meade App Challenge. These stories and more, but first, the Army celebrated its 244th birthday last week. The cake cutting at the Freedom Inn Dining Facility continued the tradition of the youngest and oldest soldiers present cutting the Army birthday cake. This year, 92-year-old Joe Wright, a retired Master Sergeant and World War II veteran, joined 18-year-old Kylie Bowling, a Defense Information School student, in making the first slice. You can read more about the Army birthday, including the annual AUSA birthday observance at Club Meade in this week's Sound Off. Meanwhile, anyone with a passing knowledge of Fort Meade knows that this is the center of cyber operations in the U.S. The National Security Agency and the U.S. Cyber Command operate two of the three Department of Defense federal cyber centers. The third, although they've been here for more than 20 years, you'd be forgiven for not knowing about the DOD Cyber Crime Center or DC3. That's because they're tucked into an unassuming business park in Lithicum, Maryland, not far from Baltimore Washington International Airport. They've been there since 1998 when they were established within the Department of the Air Force. We're aligned under the Inspector General of the Air Force and we're tethered to the Air Force Office of Special Investigations uh, for some law enforcement and counterintelligence related mission sets. Uh, but we are designed and we do support the entire Department of Defense. So Cybercom, NSA, the Naval Cyber Warfare Center, our group, uh, DISA, JFHQ Doden, so the, the cyber community that's, that's clearly present on Fort Meade, we have strong partnerships with. SPEC says about 55% of what DC3 does is in support of DOD criminal investigations that range from homicide to sexual assault to drugs to fraud. A lot of their work involves cell phones. I said the majority of the devices that come in are the phones that, no kidding, can't be unlocked in the field. Uh, as the technology continues to evolve, it's, it's a term within the law enforcement community it's called going dark. Uh, that as cell phone manufacturers get better at what they do, it's becoming more and more difficult to obviously get into locked devices. So uh, we have a high level of expertise uh, and some unique skill sets in terms of accessing phones. Most of the work on phones and other digital media devices is done in the computer forensics laboratory. Here's an example of one that had a damaged digitizer where we removed the logic board which was over to the right and put that into a donor phone and now she's processing the data so the logic board that was sitting here is now in a donor phone that we, uh, we bought. We'll have more on the Forensics Lab and the DoD Cyber Crime Center in a future edition of Mead Week. Meanwhile, June is LGBT Pride Month. The 780th Military Intelligence Brigade and the Fort Meade Equal Opportunity Office hosted this year's observance at Club Meade. Before the event, the EEO office ran an art and photo contest asking community members to submit artwork incorporating this year's theme, More Than Rainbows, Military Pride and Service. Winners were recognized at the observance and following the presentations, this year's guest speaker, Ashley Broadway Mack, chairman of the Modern Military Association of America, related her experiences as a 21-year Army spouse. She says, although protections for the LGBT community have gotten better over the years, more conversation and dialogue are needed. We can, we can really have these tough conversations and this tough dialogue so that we can change. So that when my children and your children are adults and whether they're in the military or not we're not having these these same conversations that it was an ugly thing in our past and that we've moved on in other news if you're catching the show before june 28th a reminder the biggest community event of the year is just days away the annual red white and blue festival is friday june 28th from 4 to 10 p.m on mclaughlin parade field the mission is free and open to the public you can access a list of frequently asked questions plus a parking map on the Fort Meade app. And speaking of the app, the Public Affairs Office is running the app challenge again this year. The top prize, an Amazon Echo. When you arrive at the parade field, what you're going to want to do is first make sure you downloaded the Fort George G. Meade app from your app store. Then go to the bulletin section and there you will find the instructions on how to play the game, what your tasks are, and what your challenges are. Once you're done, go to the Aptitude Challenge tent in the middle of the parade field where you'll be then entered to win an Echo Spot courtesy of Corvius. Again, look for clues on the 28th and win. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.